Good day. It's Monday, April the 19th. I'm Martin Gagel with Radius Research. Today, we're joined by Dan Legault, CEO of Antibe Therapeutics, ATE on the TSX Exchange. This presentation will be done in two segments, the initial pitch, followed by a deep dive as we discuss matters in detail. Dan, thanks for joining us today, and let's hear the pitch. Well, it's a pleasure, Martin. Thanks very much. I'll walk you through our deck. This is a very condensed deck of the larger one that is on our website, but um, I can go through this in about 10 minutes and get to some Q&A. Okay, so we're on Team Therapeutics. We're public on the senior Toronto Stock Exchange. We're excited by that. We're named after the beautiful French town of Cap d'Antibes, a rather, we think, romantic name for a, for a biotech company. I'm in the romantic... Uh, uh, <clears throat> mode at the moment. I'm at my farm uh, while we uh, get through this pandemic clinic and it's just a, just a perfect time to run a virtual company. We're 30 people all over North America, but we run it on the internet, of course. So this is what we do. We are leveraging the, the we we're just transforming the, the um, treatment of pain inflammation by leveraging our pretty impressive hydrogen sulfide technology, our hydrogen sulfide uh, discovery. I'm going to go into that in, in a second, but it is, it is awfully neat. It's just a, just a mind-blowing discovery by our uh, founder and chief scientist, Dr. John Wallace. That's given us our late stage program of ATB46, now actually with a full uh, name, Atanaproxisol, which is its non-proprietary name. We have finished our phase two with very compelling results. I'll, I'll briefly touch on, on that. And we're starting our phase three later this year. It's part of our hydrogen sulfide platform where we're really targeting inflammation. We have several other drugs in our pipeline, including a really neat discovery program where we're going for now inflammatory bowel disease as well as, as pain. Of course, these are very large markets. Every one of our drugs will be going for very large markets. And we study these actively with well-known third-party strategy consultants that your investors would know, Martin. And we're kind of proud of the position where we've uh, arrived at. We now have over $70 million in, in the bank. So we're very well-funded for uh, this program, not only for our lead drug, but for our other candidates as well. And, and I just think that we have su such a great team, very, very proud of that. For our lead drug, and, and indeed our, our second drug, this is what we're going after. It is the ulcers and bleeding problem from NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, drugs that you and I take uh, um, along with 2 billion people and 90% of Canadians and 90% of Americans, drugs like aspirin, Advil, or ibuprofen, naproxen, Celebrex, Aleve, these sorts of things. Together with the opioids, they make vast, the vast uh, majority of the pain market, itself the largest drug market. These drugs have been around for 50 years, and for 50 years, it's well known that they cause ulcers and bleeding in about 25% of, of, of people, just a huge problem. But there are no alternatives to these drugs, uh, except really for the opioids. And for osteoarthritis, there are, aren't any alternatives. So if you can solve the ulcers and bleeding problem, you would uh, you, you'll, you'll sell $30 billion of drug within the lifespan of your market protection. Not surprisingly, everyone and their uncle has gone after this over the past uh, 30 years. The biggest effort of all was the so-called COX-2 selective drugs, such as Celebrex and Vioxx. They were marginally better, killing you for cardiovascular reasons. Most of them were withdrawn. Celebrex never was. But when it established itself, the American Heart Association came out strongly in favor of naproxen. Today, naproxen, the dominant NSAID for osteoarthritis in North America. We think we've solved this problem. It's very exciting. So as I mentioned, our lead drug is for osteoarthritis, and then all other, well, we will broaden that to all aspects of chronic pain. Our second drug is for acute pain, primarily post-operative pain, where it will confront the opioids. Doctors at a huge inflection point there or they're terrified of opioids, but they're also terrified of the ulcers and bleeding from NSAIDs. And then we have low-dose aspirin, just a wonder drug, and then you can see our IBD candidate here. We have already um, licensed our drug for over 50 
uh, countries to smaller countries. Their last deal was just a couple of months ago. It raised the eyebrows in the industry very nicely for the very favorable terms that we negotiated. That deal was for China, where we obtained, um, it was a $130 million milestone deal with 26 million uh, upfront. And uh, they pay the costs, of course, we can still control it. And uh, we really love them as a partner. Um, and it also includes a double digit royalty. So really nice validation. And now we're we're focused on moving our lead drug forward while at the same time in parallel, the, the classic business model of, of um, um, now starting conversations to partner our drug for the larger markets, United States, Japan, and the big five of Europe. I mentioned hydrogen sulfide. It was our founder who discovered that hydrogen sulfide is the body's key mediator or manager of inflammation, just a huge, um, huge discovery. And that was his second major discovery. He was the first uh, scientist who discovered how all of these drugs cause the ulcers and bleeding. So a, a real superstar happens to be my co roommate from some 40 years ago. So for the uh, neat human interest, but, but uh, just an accomplished academic. And since he discovered this about hydrogen sulfide in 2001, the science has really exploded. Uh, hydrogen sulfide now known to be made in every cell of our, of our body um, and playing a critical role, not only in managing emission, but also in cellular repair and cellular uh, protection. And the neat thing is, is that all of these uh, roles map perfectly to the problem that John laid out some 30 years ago as to how these drugs cause the ulcers and bleeding. And it's why we have such great data, Martin. Matter of fact, here it is. Our lead drug, ATP346, we have more published uh, animal data in published in the best journals than any company, including Merck or, or Pfizer. Um, just extensive uh, amount of work. And, um, and now we have finished phase two. So four phase two studies, including two large phase two studies. The first one pictured here is for GI safety, which is the real uh, commercial uh, opportunity and the medical need. This was a head-to-head -head study in 250 people against naproxen, the dominant and said, after two weeks, you can see that 42% of people with, on naproxen had a three millimeter ulcer. This is what the, the FDA wants to see, the gold standard for ulceration versus two and a half percent for uh, ours. Re really great, great uh, data. I mean, you know, Martin, if you do the, the math, we're not, for example, 30% better, that's 1500% better. So, um, so, so really, really nice and consistent with a decade's worth of uh, published animal data. And then the other large program we, we, we study, which we finished last summer, was our, uh, was our dose ranging and effectiveness study to show that we're effective at pain. This was in 360 people, a dose ranging study, a placebo controlled, fully blinded study. And we compare it here to a very um, well-regarded and nicely done meta-analysis done by Professor Smith out of Harvard in 2016, where all the blue dots are NSAID studies. And you can see the farther to the left means more uh, pain effectiveness. And you can see that on all three doses of our drug, we were uh, nicely effective here. You know, Martin, we're not trying to be more effective. We'll just lower the dose. Um, <clears throat> the problem isn't effectiveness, it's GI safety, which was the previous slide, of course. We have done a number of uh, commercial validation studies involving extensive payer interviews and doctor interviews in these large markets of Japan, Europe, and the United States, um, uh, including pricing uh, studies and model genera um, generation. They were done by well-known um, global strategy consultancies. And uh, <clears throat> you, you can see the revenue here um, at peak sales, we, and, and this is in American dollars, at peak sales, you can see $4 billion of peak sales just for these seven markets and just for osteoarthritis. So if you broaden that, it would be um, essentially double that. So this is well known, but it is just shows how, how attractive it is if you can solve this problem. And now just to, to wrap up, Martin, very, very briefly, we're very proud, proud of the team that we, that we have built uh, in the second bullet on the left is our founder and chief scientific officer, John Wallace. I would encourage um, your uh, readers to do a little bit of research, even just Googling him and, and that will pop up. 
Joe Stoffer is our chief medical officer, at, at just a superstar. He's out of Princeton, New Jersey, uh, an anesthesiologist, um, well-known CMO, and was a reviewer in this division at the FDA, actually. Walt McNee is our chair of our board and um, was the president of the global president of MasterCard, just a su superb executive. And we've recently um, brought on two Americans with extensive NASDAQ experience as we look towards a NASDAQ uplist later this year. Our world-class scientific advisors, these are all colleagues of John's. They've been publishing uh, colleagues for uh, oh, many of them for almost 30 years. It's a bit of the who's who. Um, Lou Ignaro, for example, has the Nobel Prize in Medicine um, in 1998 for his, his discovery of these so-called uh, gaseous mediators, of which hydrogen sulfide is, is one of them, just some real superstars, and um, a, a fantastic group of partner, partnering advisors, including Angus Russell, who built, built Shire from a standing start. Shire was sold recently for $70 billion, and Don Hote, who, who uh, recently sold Ask Bio to Buyer for uh, $4 billion. So just a, just a great group of, of advisors as well. Um, we're starting to get really good coverage. You can see the over $70 million of cash in our balance sheet and really nice insider ownership. So that's it in a, in a nutshell, Mar Martin. We have accomplished a, a lot in the past a year and, and, and throughout, um, you know, finishing our phase two with compelling data, all of the commercial studies, the China uh, deal, uh, strengthening our balance sheet to over 70 billion. And we have received our IND now from the, uh, from the FDA. So we will do our phase three in the United States. Our work to date has been done in Canada. And over the next 12 years, uh, 12, um, I mean, um, uh, we'll start our phase three for our lead drug, bring our other drugs forward um, uh, as well. And of course, um, anticipate uh, partnering for the larger markets for our lead drug. That's really uh, it. Okay, well, that was great, Dan. Uh, lots of great answers, lots of information here. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. And um, yeah, people know where to get in touch with you guys on the, from your website if there are any further questions. So Dan, thank you very much for taking the time. You're very welcome, Martin. Have a great day.